Hello and welcome. I'm the Restless Kaiser. And I'm Johnny B. But together we are Modeling, Modeling for Advantage. Well, mate, look at that. Dude. Dude. We, so, we talked us all about this. We previewed this with the legit Battlefront guys. Yes, the panel where they told us all about. But I'm still excited. So this is uh, the bulge stuff, right? British bulge. British bulge, mate. And Whoa. it's a starter force, and it tells me it is a Comet Armored Squadron, sir. Because it's got comets in it. With comets. But there's a lot of new stuff in here. So do you want to read out on the back what legit what they're actually going to get? Certainly, here? certainly. You get 20 vehicles, and nine infantry teams. That's amazing, isn't it? Really. 20 vehicles, the magic number for. Th I think that's that's one of is the that markers. The sweet spot? If it's 20 infantry, uh, 20 vehicles, vehicles, stroke gun team, stroke infantry platoon. I see those things as being of kind of a similar value. Okay. So you know, it's it 20 one, sprues then, off the bat. This one, well, that's 21, isn't it? 21, So, yeah. Uh, so, you so get four Comet 77mm tanks. Nice. Interesting. That sounds a lot bigger. Uh, two Cromwell close supports, 95mm. Uh, three Chaffees. They're kind of sweet at 75mm. It's an American late war light tank, yeah? They look like something. We'll have a look at those in a minute. Uh, four Challengers, 17-pounders. One Kangaroo rifle platoon. Interesting. I didn't realise they'd weaponised and armed kangaroos. Yeah, right mate. Can armoured kangaroos is a thing. Needs must. Uh, need three need Ram Kangaroo transports. Ram Kangaroos. Fun. Two Archer 17 pounders. Mm. They look cool. Two Sexton 25 pounders. Nice. And then you get your rule book to start here decal sheets and unit cards. All the stuff. Right. We'll unwrap this and, uh, and let's have a look. Look at this. Crank them out then. Ooh. What do you think, Leon? I mean, it's always nice to have a box that's full of actual like it content, is. opposed to just bubble wrap, rattling around in there. Yeah. Oh, still waiting here. There's still more. Look at second half that. the screws. Oh my! Second half. All right, we'll have a quick, quick sort out into piles. We'll be right back. So you get one of these nice little fold-out booklets, you always get one of these, it's a British starter force. It's a combination of build instructions, say this every time, some of these kits will build more than one version, but it's started out an army for you in here, right. and these instructions are specifically how to build that army. Exactly. If you suspect your kit is able to do more variants, find a product code, which will be like the BM040, go on their website, type it in, you'll find the other variants that you can build with it. Sweet. They do that every, every time, every time. Uh, you get your Flames of War rule book. Oh, it's a beautiful smell, John. That's, oh, carcinogens, mate. Nice. I do like that smell. And then unit cards and decals. So I'll just check with the decal sheets. So we've got, yeah, so the decal sheets or the decal sheets you've got here is the this is called oh it's just got a pro, it's just got a product code number on it right so this is the generic one that we've seen a, a few times before this is late war and it's got guards armored seventh armored and the thing with these numbers is if you played mid war the, the, these are brigade numbers and the regiment numbers, mm. and they're all over the place. But in 21st Army Group, if you find a guide online to how to use these unit markings, it's not that it's for late war. It was all standardized for 21st Army Group. Okay. Which is the force that Britain deploys into Northwest Europe. They are the British and Allied armies. So this is, the, compared to the mid-war, this is consistent across all of the different components. Everything. Yeah, yeah. Post Whereas in the mid-war, so what it is, is um, it's regiment seniority. Because the British Army regiments have a hierarchy. Mm. Yeah, so like... You know, the Guards Grenadiers are like number one or two or whatever. And so, so it's the most, the second most and the lead, and then the third most senior regiment within the brigade. 
is what those red numbers are. Uh, the squares and things are squadron markings. Yes, yeah. So all of the tanks within a particular unit in Flames of War should have the same one of these on the side of the turret. And the colours also and the represent the seniority of... Is that, that might be first, second, third squadron, yeah. and then and then first, second, third troop. The, the colour and the symbol the should be the yeah. same. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, same with the circles. I think the squares, one of these is used by support units. I can't remember no, which, I can't though. Um, Wait, square, triangles, or recce? Or which one have you got on your... Um, I've got a lot of circles on mine. You've got a lot of circles on yours. I have a square on something. Yeah, I think... I have a square on the petard, I think. Yeah, I think that that might be... Is it a white square? Yeah. I think I'm that brigaded. might be it. But anyway... Well, no, because it's it's not a tank regiment. It's a support... It's a, it's not an armoured regiment. It's a tank regiment. Right. There's more on that later if you really <laughs> want to know. Uh, guards, and guards armoured is the, is the little flag. And then you've got the allied stars. Nice. Which is mostly for aircraft recognition. And a lot of this stuff, it was all redone for D-Day for consistency. Yeah. Or 21st Army Group. What's that one then? The, the, so these ones are your support units, the green ones. So this is, red is for armour. Yep. Yeah. So these you find like recce companies and so forth. These numbers. And again, there'll be, there'll be consistency. So the armoured car company in every armoured division should have the same badge. And I think the idea was the Germans couldn't identify which regiment it was by see it looking at the markings. Right, okay, yeah. They just, because all the armoured car regiments exactly have the, the same, same badge in different divisions. Yeah, I, I, I don't know that to be true, but there was a big deception went in for, into Overlord. Wow. A, a lot of effort had gone into, like, how can we, you know, really limit the intelligence the Germans are going to have both before and after. Anyway, so the decal she's a, a nice... Um, I think probably I don't have the bulge book yet. It didn't right. arrive with this. Yep. This is like this is due out. You know, um, any time now. So I'm going to confirm it. They probably have the instructions on how you mark up the tanks. I hope so. Because unlike the mid war, it's consistent. So people can work this one out. Right. The mid war stuff is all Just over madness. the place. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and in the mid war, in, in the desert, they're getting through tanks at a horrific rate of knots. That's so the no squadron putting them on, is it? Well, <laughs> no, no, no. It's within a squadron. They're, they're merging regiments and so forth. Just pulling it all together. It's like, the, yeah, we lost three quarters of our tanks in the last battle. So to make a regiment, we're going to take the ones from these three different regiments, shove them all together. But did they repaint the numbers? Nah, possibly Ain't not. Got time for that? Whoa. Ever. All talking about mid war, and that's not what this is because this is super late. This is like almost fairy really, tale really stuff, late right? war. Yeah, this uh, this is going to take you from fra from the from D Day fundamentally right through to the end of the war, which is why we've got stuff like Challenger in here, yes. which are very late deployments, Archer, etc. So what we will do then is, uh, as I say. I'll we're going to play Snap, are we? So you get a card, gonna... and then I've got to try and figure out. <laughs> you got to try and figure out which one it is. Absolutely. <laughs> so I'm just wondering what the headquarters is that we are getting, and we are getting the Comet Armored Squadron. Comet Armored Squadron. Interestingly, it's two cards because you got this is the HQ card, and this is the other unit, different tanks that might be included in the unit. Okay. That's going to be two stat cards, but only one kind of HQ card. So the Comet Armoured Squadron then, which is what the formation is, you're going to build out of this box. It can either be two Cromwell CS and two Comet, two Cromwell CS and one Comet, or two Comets. And they're wildly different points. If you just want the pair of Comets, it's 14 points. If you want two of each, it's 26. Whoa, okay. So these late war tanks are coming in. A lot of this stuff has got a 17 pounder. Yeah, these yeah. are big guns for the yeah, late war. Big stuff. Um, the formation itself then, you have to have one Comet Armoured Squadron HQ card, this one, you have to have one to three Comet Troops, one a, another Comet Troop which can either be Comets, Chaffees or Stuarts, you can have an additional Chaffee, Stuart or Dingo Recce, Yay. and then uh, Crusader AA, okay. and they're the integral, that's the, the core, the, yeah, they're the formation. ones that are uh, um, embodied, um, embedded in the formation, everything else will come out as support, including your rams and your kangaroos, oh. and, and your drop bears, and all that stuff. <laughs> uh, so the comet, then, John, 
Have you worked out which oh, one it is? Oh no, I haven't. Is it the big one? Is it the big is it one? The big one? Well, there's comets and challengers in. No, there? it's not the big one. So it must be this it one. It is. Right? It is big. Right, the comet. We've, we've, we reckon one? it's this one. Okay, we reckon it's this one. Cool beans. Um, so the the kind of the the suspension, the running gear, the tracks, and even the upper deck, they all look quite a bit like Cromwell. All of them, yeah. And um, my interest in World War Two has historically been the early and the middle period. Mm. A lot of the war gaming I've done is late period because that's what people's collections are. Yeah, generally. But I, I know very little about 1945 tanks because their impact on the war is is not significant. Well, but this is what we got here, so we, we worked out which one it is. So the Comet. The Comet, indeed. The Comet. So the Comet, you've got regular stats now. So when you had the Cromwells, they had them desert war, like they're a bit they're a bit shaky. Yeah. Uh, they had something called like cautious not stupid or something as a rule. Yeah, they've just come out and they're like, we've, Yeah, yeah, they're we've, a bit, we've seen this before. We're yeah. not gonna commit not gonna take risks. But then they've got regular stats now. For these, so Convenant 4 Plus with a protected ammo remark 3, trained on a 4 up and careful 4 up to hit. Front armor is 7, which once upon a time was a good number. Uh, side is 5 and top is 1. 12 inch tactical move though. Mm. But the big deal about the Comet is you've got the 77mm gun, which has got a 36 inch range, 2 and 1 rate of fire for holiday moving, 14 anti tank, I mean. and 3 up firepower. It's like the bridge between Team Yankee, isn't it? You know, yeah, 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 yeah. Double the, the armor. Yeah. So this isn't a seventeen pounder. It's it's like a redesigned seventeen pounder to better fit in a tank. Right. So like Firefly is brilliant for its period in the war, but it is not without problems because that gun really didn't fit very well in that turret. No. So this is like, well, what if we made a slightly different turret and a slightly different gun? This is what you get. But a 12 inch tactical move on a gun that big. So it's it, it, awesome. retaining speed. Yes. It's retaining right. speed. It's going to keep up with the Cromwell's. And it's still, yeah. Yeah. It's still do. kicking butt. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, because the Cromwell's got a 12 inch tactical. It's got, only got terrain dash of 14 and it crosses on a 3. Road dash is only 28. So you don't get that like super high speeds. But 28 on the road is still That's more than three, enough. halfway across the table. Especially our one. Go. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, what about the kit though, John? Kit, I mean... This is a brand new Battlefront kit, so far as I know. Oh, it's odd though, because it's got Battlefront Miniatures 2014, BM-04. Oh, has it? So yeah. it's not a new one, so, it's, it's a remade one. So when they moved from version 3 to 4, mm. they, they moved to a kind of release schedule around the books that they had. So although they made, they, this is maybe one of the kits that they had made before, there was no rules for it. Oh. There was no formations to put it in, so they weren't producing it. There was still a few kicking around. You could buy, you know, single sprues, but they'd come out of the back end of version 3, which was late war. Wow. When they released version 4, they started again in the mid-war. So some people have missed this. Some people, like, remember it. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? Well, I'm wondering if they've updated it slightly. I don't know if that's even possible to Because it's a nice looking kit. There's not there's not very many parts, which is always what I want to no, say. You've got the top plate, you've got the bottom hole, you've got keyed yeah. tracks. Yeah, keyed on the tracks three, is great. Two, so you, you can put them the wrong way around. Yeah. Uh, turrets predominantly two piece, which is nice because some kits, not that I've seen, I've not really built many, but yeah. some companies give you. On size, these smaller rear. kits, like I remember you building that Vitrix 12L oh, one. That the Cromwell in turret was in the four sides then the top and the bottom and just trying to hold ridiculous. all of that together while the glue dries. So these are very practical kits. Yeah, yeah. Interesting, right, so that's the tail. It's got this weird sort of ridged yes. front yes. of the turret. That's the only thing I can see on that box that would yeah. give it away. Now, the rest of it just looks like Cromwell. Yeah, and I, I don't my know what first, that is. first looked at that I thought, is, is it just got like a, you know, like a canvas baggie on the yeah, front like or, a tarp something. or something? Right, like top. But actually, it looks solid, and I don't just mean on the model, I mean in the photographs. Oh. It look it looks like a shaped piece. But because of the shape of it, it also looks like a shell trap, so I'm a little bit confused. Mm. But mantlets are, are a funny thing, they're soup they're subject to design wizardry. So Magic whether stuff. that is so just a just a, a, a bag, I, I honestly don't just know. Just a baggy. If you know, yeah, let, us, you let know. us down in the comments and we'll even read it and try and remember. It's ridged for your for your gaming for your pleasure. Gaming pleasure. Uh, you get the big gun, mm. which is great. That's the only option there. You get three little mini guns. 
not mini guns, little machine guns. Three machine guns? Yeah, three there. So it allows you for snappage, I guess. One's obviously the coax, one's the the hull. The hull, so you, so you, you, get, you get one spare, which is if nice. If you break it, yeah. But the sprue gates on They're these... They're really small. A tiny. Yeah, yeah. And they've put it on the inside of the track. I'm seeing here, sometimes they've put the sprue gate on the outside of the track, which means when you come to clean it you up, you might cut a little bit. Cut the what is the danger when taking it out? You cut into the um, track pad. Yeah, yeah. If you want true. it perfectly flat, rather than just cutting it off. Go out the back. But yeah. yeah, for a 2014 that's, that's kit. A, that's a lovely looking kit. For some, it's what, eight year old kit, yeah. yeah. Right, really pleased with it. The size, and it's a big vehicle. Yeah, big it's vehicle like they've got a like Cromwell stuck for in them. Right, stop it somewhere. We all right, there you go. What's next? Well, we need to talk about the Cromwell CS because that's okay. also in the headquarters section. Yep, and we um, have yeah, the those. option for those, yeah. And that I think might be the only place they can go. You get two of them, so they're intended, I assume, to go in here. So that's a regular Cromwell sprue, right? Yep. Um, Cromwell, let me look at the armor list, it tells you the break. Yeah, it's expecting you to make that this, put this in your headquarters. Um, so it's a regular, regular Cromwell, which is the late war British medium tank, which is, it, it's fast. CS, close, close support. support. Yeah, so, um, you, again, you see a lot more of this in the mid war, the CS tanks. It's like every squadron seems to have a couple kicking around. And I think the way that, um, Flames of War models that is it tends to put them in the headquarters of the squadron okay yeah but I'm not sure that's necessarily how they were deployed but I, d I don't I don't know I don't know. I don't think they were in their own subunits so no. like, where exactly they just fit floating around is a little bit amorphous yeah yeah absolutely oh, mate I need close support and then this just trundles out from behind the others you know <laughs> yeah and, and what the close support is is it's usually it's got a three inch howitzer Mm. instead of and this seems like it's a bit better than three inch house so it's got the regular cromwell stats it's got the same the same crew stats you know confident trained careful protected ammo six front armor four side armor instead of seven and five with the comet all right late war guns will go straight through this <laughs> this i think i think a late war sherman might have an 11. really because you're getting you're getting all those kind of like yeah, um, the you're getting all the tungsten core copper rounds and all that stuff. It's not all. What's actually happened is the gun penetrations. I think have all gone up on the set, even on the deep from the, if the vehicle was in service in D Day, mm. because you've got the better ammo. Right. Uh, but this is the CS version is what you need to build if you're building this unit, and that is a 95 mil howitzer which you can fire at 48 inches as artillery with an anti-tank power of three Wah. now bearing in mind he's striking top armor anti-tank three is gonna give you a chance to destroy tanks yeah. with artillery a little bit a little bit yeah but a lot of artillery's got two. Oh. <laughs> all right as as bombardment a little bit better then yeah yeah <clears throat> three will do it five power three up and you can direct fire it up to 24 inches, only taking the one shot though. Anti-tank eight, but firepower two up. It's got the brutal and slow fireman. So if you direct fire this at infantry, you, not only do you have a firepower of two up, but the brutal means they have to re-roll re infantry saves. Yeah. Infantry gun and armor tank teams re-roll successful saves. So if you can hit them, you're probably going to kill them. And so that's, bear in mind, like dog in infantry, you, you have to make that firepower check. They're impossible to shift. Hate them. Well, these things can kill if they can hit them. Yeah. That's the problem always, hitting them. So a pair of these are an option within this kit. Um, I don't know if there's much to say. I mean, it's that, just, we talked it's, about that one in a lot more detail exactly, it's the in the previous kit. one. You've got it, just the only thing is you're going to use the little howitzer turret. Uh, the howitzer barrel. barrel, yeah. And there's only, cool. there's only two barrels on yeah. here, so it's pretty clear which one you want to use. I think one of them looks like a gun, one of them looks like a mortar, <laughs> and that's what that is. Boom. All right. Now talking about the specific, just while we're on the subject of the comet, then just so for the points for people that want to know, take them in a troop of three or four. And they're basically seven points a model. Okay. So it's 21 or 28. Seven points. Is that good or bad? It's middling, but you know what? It's pretty good. With a firepower anti-tank rating of 14, 
it can shoot at anything in the front. Yeah, true. You know, don't, now, don't get me wrong. If it goes up against the squad on the Tigers, it's going to lose. Uh, King Tigers, it's going to lose. But I think Tigers have got front armor of 10, 12. You know, you can you can shoot with this Boom. from it, from anywhere. And with a 36-inch range, the table is, is, is your Mind oyster. Your, yeah. When you need to move, you can move. So that, the Comet Troop, 28 points. Because you're not paying for useless armor with this. The armor that it's got is protection against guns that don't matter. Yeah. And no protection against late war decent anti-tank guns. You know what I mean? It's like a flak 88 fires at you. Yeah. King Tiger fires at you. Pops. It's got 14. Yeah. It goes straight through yeah. no matter what you roll. Even at long range. But. But you're going to be popping your. But a 37 mil gun is never going to go through. Yeah, yeah. True. What does this look like against Panzer IV? A little bit dearer, a lot more destructive, and more mobile. So I, I, th I think it's a good choice. I think at seven, at seven points, it's a good choice. Mm. I mean, we we play a what seventy-five point game normally. Yeah, you could easily fit a couple of a couple of squadrons of them in if you needed to. Nice. And you can take the three or four because you don't you don't have that three and the Firefly thing. Yes, because this has got the Firefly yeah. gun or or near as damn it anyway. Big bada boom. Big bada boom. Uh, next one I got here is actually the Chaffee. Chaffee! On top of the list. So that's, that's, a, that's a different colour spoon right there. Because it's American tank. America! America. So, a uh, an interesting one in what it was in here. I didn't realise the British used Chaffees at all. Well... But it's again, it's that 1945 thing. I don't know a lot about the really late war. Because my interest in it is there's no longer a competition. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So I'm just, this is the end, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just looking for that, you know, while early in mid-war, you're looking like, well, could it could could this have gone better for the British? What might they have done differently? Sort of sort of mid-late war, you look at the German side and thinking, well, what might they have done differently? Yeah. How could this have gone better? 1945s and this game is this over, is bro. It's just <laughs> mopping up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not saying it's not interesting, it's just to me, as a reader, it didn't have, you know, the same appeal. Fair dudes. So what's happening with these is actually the numbers that are being produced and being supplied, there's there's becoming enough to re-equip the old Stuarts that the British have been using was about as say, recce yeah. tanks. The Americans don't need all the chaffies they've made, so they start supplying them. The, so enough. there you go. So it starts to appear in a few of the squadrons uh, in this. They're not they're not everywhere. They're not endemic, but they are in the British Army. They are but appearing. They are appearing in that kind of 1945 bracket. So the light tank has got Scout, Smoke and Spearhead. Um, it's a single option, 10 points for three tanks. But uh, motivation is reluctant. This is a scout vehicle. Yeah. This dude has been told he is in the recon game. Have a little look and uh, yeah. come back and tell us. It's still got protected ammo, so it's still got three up remount. It's just the other motivations. That's It's trained, but it's got the scout rule again, so its assault is worse, but it's still mm. careful on a four. It's got four front armour, three Oink. side and one on the top. Oink. Tactical move is only 12, which is the thing about some of these fast, British late tanks. Yeah. They are fast. Yeah, that's that cruiser tank doctrine still kind of hanging on moving. to that, the British. Uh, but whereas this is American light tank, um, it crosses on the three. But unlike most light tanks of the entire war, it's actually got a gun. It's got a real gun. It's got a 75 mil gun. It's not a particularly long 75, but it's got an anti tank power of 10. It's not nothing. That's not nothing, but it isn't nothing, but therefore it's price reflected. Mm. With the front armor of four, it's a, maybe a couple of points cheaper, or a point or so cheaper than a Sherman, but then it's paying for its spearhead and recon type yeah, abilities. You, you get a couple of guns up the table and bring your force forward. Yeah. Is it worth it, 10 is it, points? Because you can get a universal carrier just for get a point. Dude, yeah, just to get that spearhead. <laughs> to get that, you can get that rule certainly for two points, yep. maybe even for one, uh, with a couple of Jeeps or something like that. So, but if you're playing, if you're playing on a bigger board, if you're playing in a in an event where you don't know what you're going to come up against, a, a unit that can forward deploy, can fight most things. I mean, even 10, you'll still be able to deal with these. You'll still beat Comet in the side. Yeah. And it's got the mobility. Yeah. I mean, you just can't stand up and fight. No. Um, so I'm, I'm never sure, you know, it's things that are in the middle. Yeah. I'm never, I like things that are polarized as a war gamer. 
It's like, it's either really cheap or really good. Yep. <laughs> the stuff in the middle, I'm never quite sure it's the right choice. Well, it's fun to take But as a kit, again. though, and as a, as a model... Oh, this is near as damn it brand spanking new, mate. This is 2021. Yeah, it came out this with the with the American bulge. bulge release. Yeah, 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 American bulge release. Uh, beautiful kit again. Mm. Uh, top deck, bottom plate. Lovely keyed sides. You can't get them mixed up. Loads of space on the sprue. This sprue gates is so, it's so light. They really a sprue, have refined, you know, um, the processes. Yeah, yeah. It's and that that's just so confident, and it is kind of cute as a model. Yeah, that's what I, I mean. If I do else. have one on the painting station over there actually because I got what, one came World of Tanks release. Oh really? I but I didn't build it, so I can't tell you what it's like oh. as a build. But I do have a model, and I have you know primed it and that's so forth. Sweet. Having one there, and you get the monster gets. I, yeah, I, I mean. It's one I'd be tempted to use. If I had more time where I could paint everything that I've ever yeah, bought, I, know, right? I definitely, you would have played with some of these yeah. by now um, for the American Flames of War Army, because it is cute. And I think it's interesting. I just don't know whether that's what you want with these expensive vehicles. <sighs> yep. Because what you're going to have with this British Force is a very low model count. So, I've got 20 vehicles, mate. Sorted. You have, and it's your entire army, and yeah. any points left. We yeah. unboxed the mid-war Russian one. You got twenty vehicles. It was about it thirty. It was ridiculous. Points. <laughs> yeah, you need like three boxes. Yeah, yeah. But none of these vehicles have got a lot of staying power. This can kill all of the tanks we've looked at so far. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. On a good day. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Uh, next Big up, boy, is Challenger. This is it, right? So the this Challenger is Armour Troop. The thing he go. I'm so, gonna put that there yeah. so you can have a look in a moment. So again, the the turret on this, this is, is mental. Chunky. It is proper chunky. So with the Challenger, let's tell what what do we know about the Challenger? It's confident, trained, it's got protected ammo, it's careful. It's only got front armor of six. What? Side and rear of four. What? Yeah. But what this guy has, not only does this guy have a 17 pounder in it, rather than a cut down 17 pounder. So you see, compared to the, the Comet, has got Comet, 14, yeah. and this has got 15. That 14 was the D-Day 17 pounder. 15 is the Bulge 17 pounder. That's, mm. that, that's that better ammo. It's got the no HE rule, and it's only got three machine gun dice. Right. Um, but you can take these, rather than having these as a part of another squadron. I think... This can yeah. be their own thing, right? Yeah, this is the one that's built to replace Firefly. So this is a stretched Cromwell. It looks it as well. I wasn't sure whether it was that or the... Um, what the was Comet. the other one? The Comet. Yeah. But this one's got a lot... This one has definitely got an extra wheel over the, cruise, over the Cromwell, right? But otherwise, it's very, it has, very it's much the same. Bad, it's the same silhouette almost. So it's a stretched almost. Cromwell to carry a seven. Because the Fireflies could never keep up with them. Mm. You've got this, this fast medium tank in the Cromwell. But one in four of them is just a Sherman with a big gun. So this was built to replace Firefly. But in up. this force, again, late war availability is starting to grow on some of these more niche vehicles is you can take a whole squadron of these. So you're going to have three or four, <gasps> 21 or 28 points. Oh, jeez. So why would you take Cromwell over Comet? Cromwell over Comet? Surely you mean Challenger. Challenger sir. over Comet. Yes. Why would you take it over Comet? Because... So, Comet has one more armour. Woo! And Cross is better. Because Challenger is quite a cumbersome tank. Um... So Challenger, one less armor on the front and the side, one more armor piercing. It's faster on the terrain dash. Oh, on the terrain dash is different. Well worth yeah. it. I, te I tend not to read out every single oh, no, stat on the I'm just trying to find boring. something positive for the Challenger. Uh, oh, there's an HE round for the Comet, which I didn't realize. The This is still the 17 pounder on the Challenger, so it's yeah. got no HE roll. Whereas it looks like this 177 mil the Comet doesn't have that role. I feel like the Comet wins versatility out of this, you know? Yeah, and do the points reflect it? No, they're the same. They're the same, so it's you pays your money and you takes your choice. Do they fit in Interesting. the... Interesting. Yeah, it may be, though, that Comet is allowed as a line formation and Challenger Challenges. is a support option. Right. Now, they may be in the book another list, which is just Hazard's. 
which allows you to have a challenger squadron. Okay. But in, in with this box, this is a support unit, whereas the Comet is embedded, which makes a bit of sense. This was a re new line tank. I'm this cool new main line tank. Yeah. This was a replacement for Firefly. Mm. All right. Sweet. Um, I think the other thing about it as well is why the turret's so big is yeah, uh, 17 high. pounder is two part ammunition or, or it's very heavy, one or the other. It's got an extra guy in there. There's two loaders. It's just... It's really tall. It's just really tall. But there's two, there's an extra loader. It's almost like Russian sort of KV tool. <laughs> We're getting crazy yeah. here. But, but yeah. I, I don't think they worked together. I think it was like they would they would do shifts because it's he it's heavy work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go over, go over that. Uh, twenty twenty one kit. Yeah, yeah. It's it's lovely. Same as lovely. Yeah. Next. Ah, uh, next if it's all right with you, we'll do the archer. Hello, Archer. I love me, Archer. Get that one out of the way. Get the challenges yeah. out of the way. Get out. Get so out this of one, it. This one's a bit more queer, isn't it, John? Now, that's that one there. That's this one here. So, so what's the deal? Because the, the shape of it looks familiar. The shape of it looks familiar. Uh, it's it a Valentine, on? mate. Oh. So what the Archer is, was just another... Brick in the wall. <laughs> it's just another brick in the wall. Military vehicles in World War II were manufactured by separate companies. Different people make different things. Yeah. Yeah? We bought all this stuff from an industrialist who made money. <laughs> A lot of money during the war. Um, and so what they're tooled up to do is, is important. What can you already do? So we get to a point in the war, and it's why there's lots of dead development lines. Yeah. And things that, you know... That, that, that don't quite appear or don't make it. And as war gamers, we sometimes look at and say, why did they never make that? So, because it looked like it was going to cost a blimp fortune, probably, or mm. wasn't quite what they wanted. But retooling industrial plants in this era, their access to machine tools, you know, it's a big deal. Setting up a plant to do one thing. Because most of these things... The big difference between the kind of allied versus the German production is you look in some of the production workshops and they've got they've got these big machine calls, tools for doing various jobs and the guys who are operating them are specialists. Yeah. So they go up, they calibrate the tool, they make the thing they need, they take it back to their work bay. In an American factory and to some extent a British factory, that tool has been preset. You walk up to that, and you find a guy there who's just making them all du, day. Du, 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 two of them, please. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And that's massively more efficient if what you want is numbers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, is there's a guy doing that. That tool is preset. But you need a lot more tools as well to have each, each job has got bit. its own tool allocated. And you know what I mean by machine tool. I'm talking about this is a big piece of machinery that, that does that's could do thing. a lot of different things, but has been configured to do one particular thing. So you've got these factories that are already kind of set up to make Valentine, mm. among things, among a lot of other things, like we've seen here. And we, what we've realised in 1942 is we need a lot more 17-pounders. To combat. So combat. everybody goes away and has a look if they can get a 17-pounder in what they already make. Archer is one of the things that comes out of that. Valentine is actually the most prolific British tank of the war. Yeah? Yeah. But it's also... A little bit behind the curve. For like, well, like nineteen forty-two, it's kind, it's okay. Nineteen forty-three, we've just got Shermans coming over, so, and they're a really good medium tank. And in nineteen forty-two, it's forty-three. It's a brilliant tank. You know, it's competitive Panzer IV, D thirty-four, very similar performance, but much cheaper to make. And there's thousands of them. And there's thousands of them. So what are we going to do? So we look at what can we do with Valentine seventeen pounder. But to make it work, I think it's stretched, again, a little bit. Right. But it doesn't fit the same way around. So the drive position... Is it backwards? Well, it's not backwards. The gun is backwards. Oh. Most people, you look at the model and you say, does that really drive backwards? And no, it drives forward. The gun points backwards. Oh. But to fit it in, Valentine is a powerful little vehicle. Yeah. It's got a decent power plant for the size of it and a lot of armour for the size of it, but it is small. 
which is how it can push, you know, the thickness of the armor. It's been designed, this engine, that thickness of armor said, right, well, it's going to be pretty small then, mate. Yeah. <laughs> so Valentine is a small tank. So to get the 17 pounder in, it, it, it points to the rear. So it drives with the gun to the rear, but it's a tank destroyer. So it's ambush, right? It's an ambush vehicle. It's not a, an American tank destroyer, which is intended as a American tank destroyer doctrine, certainly in the earlier part of the war. The idea is that there's, there's a very highly mobile reserve that they're going to push in to plug holes where breakthroughs are. That's not a British tank destroyer doctrine. Mm. British tank destroyer is there's a bit of woods there. You hide there and you kill a few things. And then you drive off. And if the drive position is facing the opposite perfect. way to the guys, the boy has the disadvantage. Whee! Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah, trying to drive this towards the enemy, that doesn't work. But that's not what it's for. All right, sweet. What's it look In like? Fact, what, it looks like a Valentine with a massive gun. And, it and it's obviously it's got, it's got this... This is what's so good about, I think, Flames of War stuff, is in so many model companies, this upper hull, which has got the, you know, like the, some of the um, uh, gun carriage and so forth, mm. the, this wouldn't be one moulded piece. No. This upper hull. It would be several pieces. It could be quite fiddly. And it's a combination of the fact that they've just got good at working out what they can do and can't do. And it's small enough... The, the, the fidelity is going to be okay. And on a 28 mil, they probably can't get that quality of definition because it'd be so much bigger. Yeah. And the way injection molds work. Um, but this is, this is a beautifully simple kit. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that 10 pieces here? One of which is a whacking great gun. And it's a 17 pounder. And as you would expect. What's it look like on the, on the tabletop then with the card? What you mean? Show me the card. Yeah, show me the things. Show you the no, no, Show me the stats. Show, show me you the, the stats. Things. All right. So uh, <laughs> it's confident four plus, but it's got the self-propelled gun problem. Its counterattack is a six. Yeah. It's trained with a self-propelled gun. Its assault is a six. It's careful. I hit on a four. Front armor is two. <laughs> Side rear is two. <laughs> and top is zero. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because it may be armored at the bottom. Oh, that's, that's, that's handy, that, yeah. But that, that is just a blast shield yeah, on the top yep. and a bit of rainproofing or nice, whatever. Nice. It's not anti-tank proof. And like a lot of um, tank destroyer type or self-propelled anti-tank, there's no machine guns. Oh. This thing has got terrible self-defense issues. <laughs> <laughs> but it's designed to run away from a driving perspective. Whee! But the Germans had real problems with that against the Russians. They built tank destroyers without machine guns because like, this thing shouldn't be anywhere near infantry it's like yeah what about when the infantry is coming at you bro <laughs> yeah yeah um that does happen but you take these in a in a troop of two or four for nine or 18 points this is a very cheap 17 pounder because it's still got that 17 pounder 36 inch range still got a big bad 15 anti-tank power and if you concealed i mean yeah. cover yep you're at long range yep you still hit on a six. The armor. You just you hit well. Armor's still good. I mean, it is but helpful, being hit but... on a six is already a uh, you know. But a point. So these are like four and a half points a model. Whereas to get the same the gun, seventeen. Yeah. Seven. Uh, this was Italian, seven. Yeah. Four and a half. Sweet. Now these are not part of your core troops. Oh. You don't hear with an army out of these. But having a couple of these on a hill or something, sweet. Like it. And it's great to see the Valentine. I love yeah, that. Yeah, it's a lovely shape. Yeah, it's nice. It's it's cute. It's cute. <laughs> the last component, it's two more there's two more sprues. Yes. One of which is the infantry, British infantry sprue. We know that. If you've not, if you've not seen, seen this, the same hard plastic late war British infantry. Lovely. These are really, really nice sculpts. All of their hard plastic frame infantry is, is nice. I like it. And their usual mixture of bases. bases and so forth. Love it. Love it. That's your kangaroo rifle platoon. Because the next few the next couple of vehicles, the next two things are all gonna use the same vehicle sprue. Yeah, which is crazy. It's modular, so it, so we'll cover them all at once. So your kangaroo rifle platoon, which they're advising you building here, uh is confident, but it's got which is four up, but it's got British Bulldog Spirit counter attack on a three. 
Four. And it's got the uh, War Weary rallies on five off. Oh. So once they're spent, they're spent. Uh, they're trained and they're deadly three up and the assault, which is nice. nice for late war infantry. A lot of it's starting to get a bit, you know, shagged out. Yeah, and then man. three up save, careful. That it's it's a Bren SL short magazine Lee Enfield basic rifle sprue at space, which is two halted and one moving rate of fire. You can add a PR and a two inch mortar. Your basic platoon is seven squads, seven infantry basic, rifle bases, one PIAT team, one two-inch mortar, nine points. For 11 points, you have three ram kangaroos to transport them. Woo -woo. that later. You can have a five base, five infantry bases, the PIAT and the mortar, seven points, or nine with the ram kangaroo. And that's one of them things that you're going to do depending on, like, the last few points. Yeah. So I, would, I would generally say. Yeah. Uh, it is always nice to have at least one infantry platoon just for home base defense Sitting there, yeah. stuff. Sitting on the back line. Is that you don't like playing an all armor force when you haven't got that? No, I struggle. I, I need yeah. that anchor. I need that. Yeah, yeah. Somewhere where you know what you do. It's like they're going to be all right. All they need to do is sit there, <laughs> dig in, and stay there. Yeah. Uh, interestingly about this, because different armies are modelled in different ways, mm. I am always annoyed by the platoon mortar. Is the two inch mortar the fifty mil? Yeah. Is that it often has to fire as artillery? And then you have to use that artillery firing. All for stuff, one little. Like, all for one tube yeah, of a very light mortar. This doesn't do that. This two inch mortar just has a 16 inch range, gets one shot, an anti tank power two, and a four up firepower. Okay. There you go. And that's how I wish they all Sorted, worked. yeah. You know, if it's an embedded weapon, make it shoot like a rifle base. Mm -hmm. Just because, even if you want to give it like plus one hit, this has got overhead fire system. So it still counts as direct fighter, but it can resolution, ignore, but it can ignore things in the way, right? Wait, that's epic. so much simpler. Was it the US Paras or something? We, we definitely use that. We have like, used. I don't want to fire this more. Yeah, it takes time. time. Yeah, it takes time too to much do effort. anything. Too much effort. Yeah. All right. That's the infantry platoon. But we got now. So the last sprue in here, it's recommending you build three as ram kangaroos because that's going to be for your infantry. That's going to mechanize them. Yep. And you build two as sextons, which is a 25 pounder on a Sherman hull. Bad, bad stuff will happen. So you, what, what do you know about a ram kangaroo? All I know, it was a can -Ad tank. I've never seen it. I've yep. never seen any sort of silhouette of it. Um, it's in my bolt action rule book as an awesome, you know, nine it's a plus thing. armor. Yeah, it's a thing. I know it, it exists, but I have no idea what it looks like. Yeah. And, and now we have it. So, tell me. So, the, the, not the colonies, the dominions, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, certainly in the kind of late, the, the late early part of the war, so around 1940, 1941, things are looking pretty bad mm. for the Allies. Yep. Or at that point, the British Empire. Yeah. Yep. And so these do, these dominions, the semi-independent colonies, the big ones, are having to think about what they might have to start thinking about their own defence. They might have to start thinking about, we need to stop shipping troops to Europe and North Africa and start meeting some of our own. Wow. Um, so they've kind of got this idea as like, well, what can we make with domestic industry? Um, and the, the most of them don't really get that far with it, but Canada's probably the most industrialised of the Dominions. Um, and it's building stuff under licence already. So it's building... It's building British tanks in Canada, yeah. But it's also building American tanks in Canada. With the, you know, they've they've paid the license fee. Come and give us the plans. We'll start building them, um, to some extent. But they start to get nervous about whether America can continue to supply on the scale that they can. So the Canadians are looking at like, what can we do on our own? So the Ram Kangaroo is fundamentally a Canadian version of the. It's not Sherman. The is one it before. Not? The one before. The uh, Grant. Grant. Yeah, Lee. It's Grant so it's thing. it's what what a it's what a British designer would have done with the Grant tank from the beginning. Okay. 
Yeah. Right, yeah. Because um, the, the Grant architecturally isn't that... The Sherman is really an iteration from it. I mean, it looks radically different mm, from the top, but the tracks, the suspension, the engine, the, the overall shape, the overall length, those kind of things, there's a lot of commonalities with them. So the Ram tank, I'm, as far as I can recall, and I could be getting this completely I wrong, mean, but yeah. I think it's it's the Canadians going, well, okay, well, what if they stop doing this? What can, what we, we, what can we do? What can we make? So it's 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 very Sherman looking. I mean, it's because got the rounded bottom half edges and whatnot. Yeah, but it's got a six pounder gun because it's a British vehicle, right? And it's got a much bigger turret. Now you look at the size of the turret on a Grant versus a Lee. There's a huge difference. Mm. There's a British one to put a radio man in the turret. So I need to, re oh, no one put a radio in the turret. Just then, a radio. If the radio is not next to the commander, I'm not sure what's the point in having a radio. Right, yep. You know, that kind of thing. And I'm saying all this about a Ram tank because you can build a Ram tank in this, but not with these cards. Yeah, yeah. Because these you things are all built from the, the from, from Ram tank holes. Yeah. All right. That's, that's why that is. Um, so what it's recommending you build in here, and what's really pleasing is they've built this new modular sprue, which is going to allow you to build the ram tank. This is the turret. It's going to allow you to build the kangaroo, which is the APC, which is literally a ram tank with the no Just, turret in yeah, it. Yeah, take it off. And like a big hole in the middle of the tank. Being used as an RP. Presumably there's bits of it that have been, oh, the workings inside have been removed, or the, you know, the, the gun and the ammunition. The so there's gubbins, bits for guys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the sexton, which is the twenty-five pounder mounted on the same hole, which is cool, which is which is absolutely all on the one sprue. Um, this we just took this out of the box now. I, I have not had a chance to build one of these. No, but if I was building a new British army from scratch, I'd probably do this. These did get issued to British, well Canadian, I think rather than British, but they did get issued to units. But by the time they were deployed, they got Shermans. So they'd, get, they'd have these, like, you got you are being deployed to France in June or August, October, whatever it is, your unit. Yeah. You have got now ram tanks. By the time it comes to deployment, new shipment of Shermans have arrived and said, do you know what? It'd be a whole lot easier on supply if, if we, we use the same tanks as everybody else Shermans, over there. Right. Yeah. But there were certainly various points when it looked like that they would get used. Wow. But they didn't need to in the end. Okay, so they were, but they're, but they're, but they're always there. Not but it's far really better used. than the training tank. I mean, and the six the six pounder gun is is decent. Is decent. It's not by late war standards, but then if you're starting to talk about Panther and stuff, neither are most of the seventy five mils here. You know. Yeah, true. Um, but yeah, yeah. So you can build the Sexton or the Ram Kangaroo. <laughs> Ram Kangaroo is it's the uh, these these other two are used widely. Yes, that's why they're that's why they're in here. Ram Kangaroo APC. Um, it's so it's an armed personnel carrier with front armor six, which should be uh, Team Yankee players are like that. <laughs> six front armor on my infantry oh, fighting vehicle. Because um, yeah, it's a Sherman tank is why only ten inch tactical move, and it can allegedly carry three passenger units, and it's got the tractor rule, so you can pull guns with it. Uh, can carry three teams of infantry or one gun team as passengers. There you go. Ooh. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, so, and it's basically an infantry comes with three of them. Oh, weapons-wise, just for those. It's, it, got three, got it's got three machine gun dice. It's got the bow machine gun. Oh, yeah, sweet. It's got a bow machine gun, right? Which, which is, on this is a little which tiny is turret. Yeah, uh, is it? Yeah, on the ram. Oh, no, that's, on the, little... that's one of them at the front. You know, like the Crusader, the mid-war one? Yeah. That's one of those little machine gun turrets yeah. instead of it being built into the instead of face of in the, the face plate. <laughs> yeah, has got my own little spot. Yeah, man. Yeah. That looks uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, but it's still in there. But I just could never get over because you always you always have the top down view as a war gamer. Mm. This gaping hole in the middle yeah, of it. Yeah, you got like, little dudes in there waiting is that, out. It's like that's a terrible APC. It's in, well, it looks like a gaping hole because we're used to thinking what holes look like that. There's a big hole in the top of every half track, right? Well, yeah. yeah. It just doesn't look like a hole. It just looks like it doesn't have a roof. Whereas this looks like it has an inadequate roof. <laughs> oh, and they look awesome. So it's, it's a medium tank. Used yeah, absolutely. APC. Absolutely. I, I, I can't tell you, I don't have another card to hand to compare this. 
Well, you're paying two points for the upgrade. Yeah, that's... Yeah, because it shows you two different prices. Yeah. It's two points for... to mechanise your infantry. Boom. Then the sexton are six and 12 points, and they're 25 pounders. And then rather than being infantry bases with a four-up save, these are vehicle bases with a front and top, a side armour of one. Oh, yay! Woo! But they can move... Top armor zero. Faster. I mean, I can tell you that they're fearless no, they and can't. stuff, but it doesn't matter <laughs> because they can't fight for Toffee. But they've got the 25 pounder stats, so 80 inch artillery range, three anti tank, four at five bar as a bombardment. Direct fire, though, bearing in mind this is a self propelled gun, so you can pop up, you can um, blitz before you shoot, you can blitz in, into from out of cover. Yeah, hello, you could blitz to take a shot. Or, if you're already out of cover, you can take a shot and then sneak a Do peek or whatever, thingy, that, yeah, whatever right. that one is. We never and you, those. <laughs> no, but it's got skill ratings veterans, so you actually got a reasonable oh, chance of pulling off. Okay. 80 inch range, because the direct fire on these is two shots halted. Nice. And is a nine with a three up firepower. Now again, that's not gonna that's not gonna take out Tiger from the front, but medium tanks, light it tanks. Can, it can do something. It's, it's not a bad, I think they call it shotgun. You know, like the you know the gaming meta talk about shotgun t shotgun vehicles, oh, really? things that can pop up do do not too bad at close range that otherwise you want to hide them. Yeah, slink away. Yeah, I mean you don't want that on your front line, do you? Now what the, the, what I'd say with that is they're not as good as priests because they're slightly smaller guns. Mm -hmm. The priest is I think 105 mil, it's American caliber, whereas this is 25 pound. It's slightly smaller. But as a result of that, it's a little bit cheaper as well. And it and it is whether you want to decide whether you want to do this as a gamer, is I believe that seven, that twenty five pounder dismounted twenty five pounders, uh, seven and fourteen points for two and four. Run these are three points each. So it's a cheaper way of getting. It's a cheaper way of getting yeah. them. Yeah, and as long as you can definitely hide them, that's fine. But these, if you fire a thirty seven mil gun at a th at a twenty five pounder, it isn't going to do anything. Not, not if when you fire it at one of around. these, it'll knock them out. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah that's the, the risk. It, it's got so little armor as to make it vulnerable mm. to like anti-tank guns, yep. which gun teams are not especially. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So that's that's the main stuff. There you go. That's good to see so much new, right? There's a lot of twenty ones in there. Uh, the sprues, a lot of twenty ones uh, in there. So, Resident so the, the crew, the crew figures is a bit more of a brain teaser. Oh, it was a team. We, we got. One. I'm not totally convinced that we've we've. No, there. I don't think we have figured it out. Um, so these are Sayocast models. Um, I think they look. You know, if you look at the like the creases in the shirts and stuff. I mean, they have creases in their shirts, so that's they, nice. They have creases in their shirts. They're they're all right. Their noses they're aren't not... oversized. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I don't know whether this is when we had them on the show. They were talking about um, they were they'd got a slightly different material. I'm not sure. This this looks similar to stuff we've had before. Yeah, that is but something feels we're working a, on. It feels a bit harder, and he did mention it being about a harder stuff, which made it easier Difficult to scrape. To tell. Yeah, absolutely. So we have come to the conclusion that <laughs> you two strips like this teeny one. Yes. And they've got like rifles, SMG, and a wavy hands. Yeah. Right? Oh. Uh, so what did you reckon they were for? Sit my belly. Um, I reckon these are Ram dudes. They're the Ram, Ram kangaroo, kangaroo dudes, so you're just going to have dudes chilling out. Yeah, so you've got six infantry models to stick in the big hole mm. <laughs> and on the Ram Kangaroo. You've then got this big long strip. Uh, whoops. Bye-bye. On the floor there. Big long strip of pairs of crew figures. Yes, now these are... Oh, these are the standard hand up in the air. Fire! And then there's a guy holding a small shell. So yeah. these are definitely going to go in your sextants, but could probably also go in the valentines. Um, and then there's another two sprues of two guys, which are presumably, I say valentines, archers. Presumably these are the ones intended to go in the archers. There's one guy who... There's one sort of... I think his leg will be leaning on something you'll find in... in you know when you build one it, of the holes, yeah, yeah, his leg maybe needs to be kicked up so that he's kind of he's definitely kind of standing on something. Pose going on, but he's he's looking up, uh, looking out with the binoculars, and then there's another guy who's kind of squat, sat on a bench. I don't know whether is the gun. Well, there's a little seat for there's the. There's a seat for the gunner, or is it for the driver? 
I don't know because we haven't built one without yet. assembling these. It'll, it'll make a little bit more sense. But it look, you know, you could do a little bit of mixing and matching here as well. Now, because these are all new, all these models look of a similar shape and size to one another. There's one something you get sometimes when you've got different generations of of crew figures. Different sculpts. They've been made at different time. times yeah. by different, and some of them, you know, the hands are a lot bigger than other ones. Noses are a bit bigger. Noses a bit ones. pointier, or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, that's all right. Yeah. yeah, and and these are. They're not as manly as the hard <laughs> plastic ones. They're a bit thi they're a bit thinner. Probably truer to scale as well. So. What do you reckon, John? And you get a lot of stuff, don't you, man? Come I on, it's another one. You can get a lot of your money. Um, I do. Yeah. You know. Lots of new things in here, which is mm. nice. I say new. Yeah. New to the game. Some are old kits, but new to the... Back in the system, back in the game. Because they've now got stats. They, got, they, they, they now fit within the system. Cards. Yeah, absolutely. That's going to make some people happy. Um, yeah. Is it a viable force off the bat? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think so. I think um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure taking two gun artillery batteries is the smartest. I don't think that's ever smart. Just because there's a lot of effort involved in Ron. We're a bit lazy as gamers. Artillery is a bit because a bit more crunching power upstairs. Yeah. Um, uh, but the way that the table works as well for getting that third or fourth gun. It's important, man. I, th I think so. I think so. But I know that plenty of people do. Some people just like the maximum number of templates. Yeah. You know, that's the kind of the meta that they go with. Mm. Um, but I like, I, mean, I really like this kit because of its versatility. You've got five of these. Yeah, you can build the Ram Kangaroo Infantry Platoon out of this. Yeah. Or, <laughs> or you can build yourself a squadron of Ram Tanks and wait for the guards to come yeah. out. Boom. Or you can build all four, four of the Sextants. Sextants. Yeah. Options. You know, yeah. And you know, the forces hopefully. Elsewhere in the other thing about this kangaroo tank is it's often used as an observer vehicle. Oh, I did not know that. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're often surprisingly, you know, you kind of think of observers as being like people with binoculars hiding up a tree somewhere. Ultimately, yeah. A lot of our um, observers are in light tanks. They got to get around. They need to track. Yeah. They need to go somewhere that's hard to get to. Yeah. And the jeep ain't gonna get up that hill unless there's a road. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, um, so they're often in in light tanks bit or later on of armor. in these. Yeah, cool. Yeah, liked it. Liked it. I think the I think the value's good. I think the variety is good. I don't normally go for the really heavy tanks, but they're not heavy tanks. No, they're medium they're like tanks with big guns. guns yeah, yeah, tanks. yeah. So you still need to think about what you do with them. Yeah, you know, it's not just like, I don't like I don't like the steamroller game. It's not a mouse. Is just, it? no. It's not a mouse, mate. No. <laughs> According to Battlefront, they are making a plastic <laughs> mouth, though. so there you go. Well, one All the box. And stuff. I think it was I think it was a cracker. I think there's a lot of places you can go. And if you're a Canada fan, uh, yeah, you, finally you, you are represented. You are proper, full on with the Ram tank and everything. Yes. All right, guys, that was it from us. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Hello. If you're enjoying our Flame to War content and considering getting one of the starter sets or starter armies. Why don't you think about buying one from our online web store at modelingforadvantage.co.uk? Thank you.